everyone. Hope you all are doing well. So let's begin the session of steganography by first introducing myself. My name is Raid Essen, and I am Pakistan's youngest cybersecurity expert. And I've also spoken at many conferences and events like Black Hat, JISEC, and uh, cybersecurity summits held by government congresses as well. I'm also a threat researcher and a security researcher, uh, along with being a certified Purple Teamer, which means that I can perform red team as well as blue team operations together towards protecting an enterprise cybersecurity infrastructure. And I'm also available on LinkedIn for connections, so feel free to ask me any questions or any doubts that you have in a session or want to learn more about it. So yeah, feel free to connect and let's jump right into the session of steganography. So in today's session, we are going to have a look at a live demonstration of how adversaries are able to intercept your request of uh, steganography. Like basically, steganography is the art of embedding data behind media files and people uh, like why do people use it basically it is to keep your confidential data safe from any unauthorized third party access now suppose you are sending a confidential data that is containing some bank details or username or passwords of any server that uh, is pretty much confidential and you and you don't want any unauthorized third party to gain access to it so what you do is uh, this is just one of the methods of encryption or uh, not encryption basically it's just uh, one of the ways of keeping your confidential data safe during transit or when it's in dynamic motion so what you do is that you uh, download any source or uh, you have any image or any media file or any uh, audio file and behind that image or any media file you store your confidential data and, and if we talk in terms of accurate uh, accurate terms it means that you are uh, embedding your data behind that media file. And what embedding does is that even if it's leaked to an unauthorized third party, they will open it and the data won't be seen, only the image will be seen. But if the adversary has both of the images or both of the media files that uh, was original and as well as uh, that was, you know, uh, that was embedded with the data, there will be a difference between file sizes the one with the embedded data will have a larger file size and the one with not which was originally downloaded or uh, was from an original source won't contain any uh, varying between sizes. So let's see it in action of uh, how adversaries do this. Here I have the Kali Linux machine and on this side we have our target which we are going to hack. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to access First of all, we are going to scan it if it's working or not, and if it has a web server, a web server application running behind it. And as we can see, it has a port 80 open, that is the HTTP port. And by this, we know that there is a web server running behind it. So we are going to access it on our browser. And this is for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to show you this was a directory that a hacker is busting on the web server you for directory busting you can use go buster owasp the directory buster or the normal the ordinary directory buster tool that is pre-installed on your kali linux machine and here you can see i have the image.txt and i have the secret.txt and this file as well so for now we are interested in the image and here you can see it's a uh, normal image of a lamborghini car so we are going to save it in our directory of steganography hacking and we are going to verify it if it's uh, of correct formatting <clears throat> yes it shows that it's a uh, jpeg format image data and it's uh, not malfunctioned or mal uh, it's not like the headers are not misplaced and nothing is uh, everything is accurate over here so we are going to also have a look at the secret.txt over here. And it says, please don't share the credentials for my file. It's a secret. Data.txt and password 1234. Now we know that there wasn't any data.txt over here. The file wasn't listed and nor the password over here. Like any, uh, you know, every credential was stored in the secret.txt. So this gives us a hint that it can be in either of the two files. It can be in the JPEG file or it can be in the WAV file. So most people prefer uh, keeping their data 
or embedding their data behind image files. So we are going to see if there is uh, any embedded data behind this image and what tool I'm going to use is Steghide. Steghide is uh, something you can uh, is a tool that you can install on your Kelly Linux machine or any hacking platform that you are using. And what it does is that it gives you a bit, uh, it gives you some functions that you can perform. For example, you can extract data, you can as well as you can embed data into images or any media file you are uh, like focusing into embedding your data and sending it to your receiver or your colleague, etc. So we are going to use this tool called stack hide we have the image.jpg with us and we are going to extract it from the source file of image.jpg and as we know data.txt from the secret.txt file which was hosted on the web server we know that there is a data.txt or they there can be uh, this file with this password that we need to crack now I'm going to exfiltrate this data.txt from this source file and it requires a passphrase. And here we have a passphrase over here, password dot, uh, password1234. We can test it out if it's working over here. And yes, it did. Here it's showing that wrote extracted data to data.txt. Now here you can see we have data.txt with us and we are going to see what content it has for us it shows that the username is trunks and the password is user hint s is in dollar symbol now what it does is that it has exfiltrated the data from that image file and given me the access to the credentials that was stored in that particular file by in, uh, by cracking that uh, file's password which was just hosted uh, on the web server in clear text. So there was no complex cracking uh, uh, methods of password cracking like John the Ripper or any password cracking tool that you might use. So it was just a simple task. Now this username and password can be connected over SSH with the victim as well. But for clarity, I'm going to access it directly on the victim's machine over here so that you get a better understanding of how hackers do this. Username is trunks and the password we are going to use is user with the dollar symbol. And as you can see, I have successfully gained access over the user account. Now for verifying, I can show you the ID. Am I it's trunks? Now a hacker doesn't want to stop here. What he aims is that he needs to escalate his privileges. And from my perspective, my best practice is to see the bash history or the commanding history that the victim might have typed on his or her uh, system or the server they are working on because history might contain some juicy information. For example, you might have written your username or password. You might have logged in into some of the websites or any other system you might have connected to using RDP, SSH, uh, FTP, any other protocol you're connecting. And that can show the hacker, the adversary, what usernames and password you might have used. So we are going to access the bash history over here, tab.bash history. <coughs> here we can see a Perl uh, programming language uh, command over here that shows the user has created a user called Tom, which has been assigned the root privileges and it is stored in the etc slash password directory which uh, and the password is password at the end 973 which uh, which is again encrypted <clears throat> so we are going to see if that user really exists which has been assigned the root uh, privileges now it's asking for the password of the user tom so we are going to use the password at the rate 973 in order to see if it's uh, if it really works so i think i have written the password wrong password at the rate 973 yes so we are successfully inside the root privileging machine uh, like i have ex uh, escalated my uh, privileges from user to root and i am able to perform any administrator task on this linux system for example i can verify who am i and uh, the id is zero which means i'm the administrator and we can dot <coughs> Hooray, you got root. 
So we have successfully escalated our privileges and I have shown you a way or, uh, you know, the method of how hackers use stack height like tools in order to extract data that you might have embedded behind your media files for confidentiality purposes. And in this way, the confidentiality and the integrity and the availability of the data has been broken. Like the complete CIA tried has been broken by the adversary by, by just using this technography or cracking technique. And you also know the tool that's called the stack height. You can also learn more about it for educational purposes of how uh, hackers and adversaries use these tools in order to extract data uh, and also store data in multiple formats of files. For example, in our case, we had a JPEG file, but people can also store it <laughs> in audio files, in uh, video files or any document so that they uh, like, uh, the format of uh, embedding data behind images is a traditional method. Every hacker, whoever sees these images will surely go in depth of it, will scan it, will go, uh, will analyze it in depth, will use these kinds of tools like stack height to see if, if any embedded data is there behind the file, behind the image file. But if you're using documents or audio files or any video files, that might not be like, the, the hacker might not go into in-depth anal uh, analyzation most of the times. So this was it for today's session of mine and I hope you have a great day ahead and you got to learn some new techniques and insights on how hackers use steganography techniques in order to exfiltrate your confidential data and gain access to your system. So once again, thank you very much for joining my session and I hope you have a great day ahead.